We've been hearing stories from people in Israel over the last several weeks following that attack by Hamas on October 7th. Australian actor Nathaniel Buzalich, uh, who you may know from the Vampire Diaries and the originals, is in Israel right now and joins us live via Zoom to share what he's seen. Nate, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. We appreciate it. Of course. First off, can we kind of go back to the beginning? Explain to me how you found out about the attack by Hamas on Israel. Yeah, I was uh, actually about to go to bed that evening. Uh, I live in uh, Georgia and um, news alerts started sort of popping up on my phone about uh, a recent attack in Israel. It's something I watch closely. You know, it's sadly a common thing for terrorism to strike this nation uh, with the likes of Hamas and Hezbollah and pro-Palestinian groups who are supported by the Islamic regime. But that evening was very, very different. And so when I started seeing the reports coming in that the Gaza border had actually been breached, um, it was something that was quite shocking to me, knowing what was on the other side of that border and the goals of Hamas. What inspired you to go over to Israel here during the war? And are you concerned about your safety at all while you're there? Look, I'm a Christian, you know, and a lot of Jewish people uh, and Israelis in this land have asked me the same question. Why did you come? Despite the fact that we're at war, despite the fact coming into this country is actually quite dangerous. And the answer that I give them is the same answer I'm going to give to you. I was saved by a Jew. You know, I believe that Jesus came into this world and he had a purpose to bring about salvation to a people. And my life was changed because of him, you know, and it's not necessarily the, uh, you know, the statement that the world often makes publicly and boldly, but I believe I was saved by this Jewish man who's known as Jesus. And when you really believe in the message of the gospel, uh, I think one of the most powerful things Jesus says to his disciples 2000 years ago is that there's no greater form of love than And uh, so for me, there was just a simple solution that these people that I have so deeply become connected with uh, over the last several years, uh, I consider friends. And so I had no other choice but to come and expose the lies of Hamas and show the world what's really, what's really going on here. What have you seen so far while you've been there? I would say that I've seen the worst of humanity in contrast to the best of humanity. Now, let me explain that. Uh, yesterday, I went down to a kibbutz, which is right near the Gaza Strip, and uh, I was escorted by the IDF in a very, very short operation to go through some of the homes and houses of the victims. And I'm talking blood everywhere. Uh, the massacre of innocents, elderly people, women, children. Uh, I've sat with uh, the families of victims. Uh, I have seen the most horrific and violent actions uh, under the banner of Hamas, which is no different to ISIS. And at the same time, I've seen a people, an Israeli people who have come together doing absolutely everything they can to help this nation overcome this evil that they're facing. Uh, I've seen smiles on faces of the, the survivors and some of the victims, friends of the Nova Music Festival. Um, and I'm amazed at how a people can be so brave in the face of such evil. So it's a real contrast for me right now, you know, seeing the worst of the worst and also this beauty of this Israeli people who are now coming together in a way that um, I haven't seen since I've come into this land before. On that same note, what sort of stories are you hearing from people? Because I'm sure you've spoken to quite a few people while you've been there. What sort of stories have kind of stuck out to you? Yeah, I met two, um, two young Israelis who went to the Nova Music Festival. Uh, one of them was a young girl who was shot in the leg and she was hiding from Hamas for several hours as they kept entering into this bomb shelter that they often have set up. It's a very, very simple concrete room. And there was about 40 people in there and she was lying in blood while her leg was bleeding out, while other dead Israelis were lying on top of her. And the only thing that saved her was the dead bodies of those who were around her. 
She didn't know if she was going to get out of there alive. And these terrorists who entered into southern Israel had one goal, one goal, learned to kill them. You know, another story is a young man who I met, an uh, incredibly young kid. His name is Toma. He was also at the Nova Music Festival. The second I walked into his hospital room, he, he greeted me with a smile and offered me food. This is a kid who got shot in the arm three times by Hamas as he was trying to escape in his car. And what makes this whole story tragic is he ended up having to run for his life, hide in the bushes for several hours, and he made a promise to himself. He said, I'm going to make it home tonight, no matter what it costs, no matter what happens, I'm going to make it home tonight. Despite the fact that his, his arm was fully, almost unfunctional because of the gunshots, he eventually made it home. And what broke my heart was what his father told me after the interview. This young man, his name is Toma, and his great-grandfather was being escorted on a train to a death camp in Nazi Germany. And he escaped that train and he was shot by the Nazis and he was fleeing for seven hours and he eventually made it back to his home to help his own family. And when you realize the same evil that existed with the Nazis and almost a parallel story from a, a, gr a, a grandfather to a grandson has now unfolded, it's it's shocking. It's 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 almost like the world is trying to tell us history is repeating itself if we don't pay attention. And I know that like many of us, you had seen before you went there the images, the videos that have come out of Israel as all of this has played out for the last several weeks. But how does it compare to actually being there and seeing it firsthand? Because I imagine that the videos, the photos can only capture so much. You know, what really hits you when you're here is the tears of those who have lost loved ones. You know, you see these images, but it's not until you sit with people who have best friends that are still in Gaza being held captive by wicked men and who knows what's happening to these young men and women under the control of Hamas. It's, it, it breaks your heart that these people haven't even been given a chance to mourn the loss of loved ones, that they're now at a war uh, to defend their very existence. And somehow people in the West, people in America are trying to debate and decide whether we are facing uh, wickedness from Hamas or somehow these men are resistance fighters and their movement is about freedom. Um, that's the most shocking reality of all this. It's you know, the victims and their stories is heartbreaking, but what breaks my heart more is we live in a time where the world is so blind that we can't even distinguish what is wickedness and what is righteousness anymore. What message do you want to make sure gets across to the people who are watching you right now and hearing uh, your firsthand account of everything? What message do you want to make sure gets out to those people about what is going on there in Israel? Yeah, I would say to anybody who is planning on or has participated in a pro-Palestinian movement uh, around the US in the last few weeks, I would challenge you to really understand what those movements are ultimately supporting. It's Hamas. And Hamas isn't about land. And Hamas isn't interested in coexistence or peace. Their, their goal and their objective is and has always been the same it's the destruction and the murder of jewish people in this land they desire jewish blood and so they may cover their story with all the talking points that you'll see from pro-palestinian groups oppression apartheid occupation but when you take all that away and you get to the heart of what this movement is all about Hamas only desires the blood of Jews, and this has always been about killing Jewish life. That's what this is about, and that's what um, the American people need to realize. This is not a battle uh, for land, and this battle is going to come to the U.S. quickly if the nation, the West, doesn't stand against this wickedness, which is Hamas, because they don't want to stop in Israel. You know, I always say to people, you won't see a Palestinian fearing for their life in New York as Israelis or Jews go searching for them, hunting them in the streets. 
But the same reality isn't true for Jewish people all over America right now, who now have to consider hiding their Star of David, covering up and concealing their true identity as a Jew purely because of their birth into a nation of people. This is all about Jewish blood. And that's what I think the American people need to understand. What is the biggest misconception that you've heard about this war that you do want to help clear up? A lot of people have posted, let's say, misinformation on social media. They've said things that aren't necessarily true. What misconception do you yourself want to help kind of clear up? I think the most important thing for people to understand right now is that when you're dealing with a terrorist organization that has proven to the world that they have no issue raping women next to their dead friends, killing children, uh, massacring families in front of each other, putting babies in ovens while the mother is raped and she can hear her own child burning to death in the oven, they have no issue lying. And so their propaganda machine is in full effect. They will produce and make sure that the necessary content will be consumed by the Western world to try and convince you to hate the Jewish people and ultimately the nation of Israel just as much as they do. We need to have critical thought in this process. We are living in a time where propaganda and misinformation is at an all time high. We can't just look at what we're receiving and believe it to be true. We need to dig deeper. We need to look for facts. We need to understand the history. And we need to get to the heart of what Hamas says they want to do. Their intent is clear. They're not hiding this. They want to kill Jewish people. What happened on the 7th of October is exactly what pro-Palestinian supporters have been saying for a very long time. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Now we understand by which means they desire to achieve that. Go to one of these rallies, support one of these marches. You're not going to hear words like coexistence and peace. And the reason you're not going to hear those words and you're not going to see a peaceful people gathering to help the Palestinian people, you're going to see this instead. Anger, violence and a deep rooted generational hate that is unexplainable and unjustifiable. So we as the people of the West, the American people, if you're watching this right now, I would say now is the time that you get to decide. You get to decide if Hamas continues to exist and this radical Islamic ideology continues to breathe. Or this is the moment in human history where we all agree that what Hamas did has created their own expiration date. And no matter what the cost is moving forward, we cannot allow this radical ideology to exist because if we don't stop it here, it's going to come to everyone in the world. We see it already. Sydney, New York, Dagestan, they're already gathering and they will continue to gather unless the nations and the people who realize what truth is rise up and say enough is enough. And I do on that note want to get your opinion as you saw that video coming in out of the Russian airport you were just talking about with uh, folks there who were screaming for Jewish people and you know that several people were injured there. What were your thoughts as you were watching that video for the first time and hearing about that? Well. That was motivated by, I would say, one specific individual. Uh, it's the UFC fighter who comes from that region of the world. After his fight, he said something very publicly about how he was going to fight and stand with the Palestinian people. He made it very, very clear that he was against Israel. And so what we see is his words, his influence is so powerful that he can gather angry young men and create such a vile anger that they're willing to go and hurt innocent people coming off an aeroplane, all in the name of their form of freedom and justice. This is the reality. They don't care who they hurt. They don't care who they kill. As long as blood is spilt, they feel like they are doing what is right in the sight of their own eyes. You know, Jesus says this, that a time is coming where people will kill you. And he's talking to his Jewish followers and they'll think that they're doing a service to God. I think what's shocking to understand is every single time we saw this body cam footage of these terrorists entering into southern Israel, they were screaming one statement and one statement alone. It's the same statement every single radical Islamic terrorist seems to chant in unison. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. God is great. 
God is great. They are convinced that the wicked that they are pouring out on this world is a service to God. The Bible tells us this. The logic tells us this. This is wickedness, and this is motivated by a radical ideology. And until the Islamic world stands up and agrees with us, we have a real problem on our hands. Nathaniel Buzilich, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. Is there anything else you want to add before I let you go? Yeah, I want to say this to the Jewish community in America. The world has tried to wipe you off the face of the earth many times. Empires, kingdoms, nations have always tried to rise up and remove the Jewish presence. They've never won. They never will win. I'm a firm believer that Hashem has you and he's going to protect you. He's going to deliver you from this wickedness. And I want to encourage you that people like me are speaking up on your behalf. I'm not Israeli. I'm not Jewish. I'm a follower of Yeshua, and I will stand in the place of many. I will stand before kings. I will stand before whoever I have to, to proclaim your right to exist. And I do know that a time will come where everyone will be judged. To those who aren't Jewish, I would pray and hope that you meet people who are hurting right now and really see who the true victim is in this story. It's the Jewish people. It's the nation of Israel, and they need our help and they need our support. So I would encourage you to listen, learn, and before you decide to join any pro-Palestinian movement, realize what that movement is all about. Nathaniel, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and to share your firsthand account and perspective of exactly what is going on there. Thank you again for taking the time to be here. Of course, thank you so much. All right, everybody.